Hi everyone, welcome to today's 30 on Thursday where we will be talking about the top five SharePoint support requests. If this is your first time with us, our 30 on Thursday series is a bi-weekly 30-minute SharePoint webinar series where we talk about the hottest topics, products, and trends with Microsoft SharePoint. Our next webinar will be Manage Metadata and Automatic Document Tagging in SharePoint and will take place on April 17th from 1.30 to 2 o'clock Eastern Time. You can see our full schedule of webinars at sharepoint.fertivity.com slash webinars. We have some upcoming online training courses coming up. We have um, Business Intelligence for SharePoint course next week. We also have a number of other courses on our website if you go to sharepoint.pertivity.com slash training. And we would like to invite you all to our sharepointconference.org taking place in Reston, Virginia in May and Dallas, Texas in October. Everyone on today's call will receive 15% off if you use the promo code at the bottom of the screen when you register. It's our seventh annual conference. We offer pre- and post-conference full-day workshops, and we also offer um, separate tracks for business users, technical users, and user experience professionals. For more information about our conference, please visit our website, sharepointconference.org. So for today's session, it is being recorded. Um, you can find this recording and an archive of all of our past sessions on our website. Um, for all your questions today, please insert them in the question window in your GoToMeeting panel. We will get to all the questions at the end. So today's topic is SharePoint Issues Solved, the top five SharePoint support requests. Our presenter today is Neil Balbandier with Pertivity, and I am Julia Oates with Pertivity, and I will be moderating today's session. So let's get started. I'm going to make Neil our presenter, and he will take it from there. Okay, well good afternoon everybody. I'm going to share my screen here. I've got a, a small deck um, to show as we walk through the uh, what we consider the top five issues um, that we see in the Protivity Managed Services Group. Um, <clears throat> these may or may not be some of the top five issues that you have seen, but I would be willing to bet that uh, that everyone on the call has seen at least one of these at least once uh, since they've been working with SharePoint. Um, just a little bit of background about our managed services team. Um, we um, are also known as SharePoint On Call. Um, that was our, our previous name and we still answer to that. Um, we support clients on SharePoint 2007, 2010, and 2013, and we consider ourselves an extension of your internal SharePoint team. Um, uh, we consider ourselves partners with all of our clients, and uh, we always want to be there whenever they need us. Um, we have a we have Microsoft certified experts in all areas of SharePoint. Uh, listed some of them here. Uh, from solution architects, SharePoint admins, uh, developers for user interface and custom application development. Um, and we also offer dedicated account managers for all of our clients. So let's get into the, uh, the top five issues. And these are not necessarily in any particular order. Um, but uh, one of the top issues that, that, that we see on a regular basis uh, um, are with alerts. And I think most of you out there have probably encountered some sort of issue with uh, alerts where either nobody is getting their alerts from SharePoint or sometimes they're getting them and sometimes they're not. Um, and, you know, where are the alerts going when they're not getting them? Well, the dog's probably not eating your alerts. Um, they may or may not be um, sitting in on your uh, SharePoint server or your SMTP server somewhere. Um, some of the issues that we've run into uh, and, and we've found through various uh, troubleshooting methods um, 
is that it could be an issue with SMTP setup in SharePoint. Um, if you're using dual authentication, uh, Active Directory, and forms-based authentication, uh, particularly in the earlier versions of SharePoint, um, SharePoint doesn't handle it if you have uh, handle it very well if you have multiple users with uh, the same email address, which can often be the case uh, with uh, dual authentication. Um, if you have an FBA user uh, and their account is, resides in uh, CRM and you have an Active Directory account for that same user, uh, they often use the same email address on both of them. When SharePoint goes to send out alerts, it does a search uh, through the user store for a particular email address. Once it finds it, it tries to go out and find the account. Doesn't know exactly, excuse me, where that's going to be, uh, whether it's an Active Directory FBA. So it typically just stops sending any alerts out for that list or that library. Um, and since it doesn't necessarily process the alerts in the same order every time. Uh, you can often see a, a situation where um, several people will get an alert before it hits that particular bad account, and then um, uh, it stops at that point. But those people may actually come uh, come up after that bad account the next time an alert goes out, so they won't get the alert at all. Um, so there's uh, various things we can do to fix these. Uh, it really depends on uh, the configuration of the authentication providers. Um, uh, unfortunately, in a 30-minute uh, call, we can't get into all the different ways to uh, uh, to resolve that. But uh, it's something to definitely keep in mind if you're running into alert issues. Login prompts. Um, we've probably all seen these also, uh, particularly on uh, intranets where users are automatically logged on using their Windows accounts. Um, they try to open up a Word or an Excel document and they're prompted to authenticate again. Um, and they typically don't have that with PDFs or images or non-Microsoft Office documents. Um, many of you may have already figured out that uh, uh, this is often a browser issue um, where the intranet site isn't in their trusted sites um, and uh, so, so it's not carrying over that uh, authentication to Microsoft Office. Um, with forms-based authentication, there's actually separate security for Microsoft Office applications and SharePoint 2010. Um, so if you're using Internet Explorer, you may often run into the same types of issues. Uh, we have found ways to work around that um, without, without a, a blanket statement of use a different browser, which often actually does work in that situation. Um, but uh, using HTTP handlers and different configurations for Office integration, uh, we've been able to overcome that issue, uh, and that's particularly with SharePoint 2010. Um, with SharePoint 2013, Microsoft seems to have uh, made some corrections to, uh, to allow it to handle forms-based authentication and, and persisting the, uh, the authentication cookies to allow it to remember who you are when you're going to open up the uh, Office documents. Um, with SharePoint 2007, for those of you who are still there, um, we found that uh, forcing the um, persistence on the cookie, basically making it remember me when I'm logging in, um, uh, seems to address the issue for forms-based users when uh, when they're being prompted to log in again. Um, another situation with login prompts is you know anonymous access has been has been uh, enabled on a particular document library, and 
users are still being prompted to authenticate. A big reason this happens uh, that we've seen anyway is that either um, there are additional uh, restrictions, um, access restrictions down at the document level, um, or it could simply be that users have uh, not published their documents. So uh, they'll often um, check in a document and send out an email and let everybody know where it's at but uh, it hasn't been published, so uh, it's asking the um, asking users to authenticate. And there can be any of a number of other reasons why um, uh, you, you might get the login prompts. There are one-offs that we've seen um, and some uh, sometimes some uh, uh, more extensive troubleshooting will help us resolve those. Uh, security certificates, this is something that we've seen quite a bit of lately. Um, uh, some of our clients are using HTTPS on their sites um, and they are finding that some content is not displaying on their SharePoint site or they're receiving warning messages or broken images or scripts aren't running on their site. And what we found is oftentimes there are references on pages or in iframes to non-HTTPS sites and uh, as you're trying to access those uh, on an HTTPS site, um, Internet Explorer or Firefox or uh, the other browsers won't display that content. They'll give you a warning and you have to respond to that warning in order to display the content. Um, a uh, one of the sort of hidden um, issues that we've seen is references to uh, third-party scripts um, are often going to an HTTP URL, um, and and most of the providers that that, that give you those scripts um, also have an HTTPS version, so you just need to look for those and, and change those on your master page. Virus protection. Well, we all know virus protection provides solid security. Um, so how could it be bad? How could it be an issue? Um, I've thrown up a picture of uh, somebody that maybe some of you out there recognize uh, uh, from the 80s and 90s. And of course, it's the Noid uh, from the Domino's commercials who was always trying to get into that pizza box and smash up your pizza. <laughs> um, the, the reason I put that there is because um, there's, it's like there's a Noid on your SharePoint server who's trying to get into valid uh, pages, valid uh, files that are necessary to display your SharePoint site properly. And your, uh, your virus protection software um, is going to try to block that thinking it's something bad. Uh, well, it's actually not the Noid in there. And uh, if uh, Microsoft has very um, specific instructions on setting up exceptions in your virus protection software to uh, avoid um, it blocking the files that are necessary to run SharePoint. And you would think, well, you know, the files are, they're good files. How could they even be identified as bad? Well, the, the um, virus definitions are updated on a regular basis uh, by, your, um, by whatever company is providing your software. And um, they often um, think that some of the DLLs and some of the other files are bad um, because they've seen... Uh, uh, attacks from um, malicious software trying to use files with the same file extensions. So uh, Microsoft, like I said, offers up uh, recommendations on how to set up those exceptions. Um, if those are set up properly, you won't have any issues with your virus protection. Um, but if you see issues with your site, particularly with search, and the site just throwing up 404 errors on a random basis, that's one of the first things that I would check out. 
And then finally, permissions. Uh, we got a lot of questions about permissions. Um, users have uh, been given permissions to a site, but they can't see anything in the document library. Um, or they can see list items, um, even though their permissions have been removed, and you know, often get the question of where I should manage permissions. Um, I know I'm running out of time here, so just quickly, um, our recommendation is always to manage uh, permissions at the highest level. Always use SharePoint groups or roles from your uh, from your role provider or um, AD security groups, and um, and try not to manage permissions all the way down at the document level or the list item level because this is often where you run into problems. So I don't know how much time we have left for questions. I think we might be running uh, running up against it. But if anybody does have any questions, if you want to go ahead and and uh, enter those in, I'd be happy to field some of them. Anybody with questions? Yes, please, if you guys have any questions, please insert them to the question window. Okay. Well, I don't see anything coming up, uh, coming up yet, um, but if you do think of something um, in the presentation here, Julia's email and my email, um, you know, feel free to send us any questions you have. We'll try to field those uh, um, as we can, and hopefully um, this was informative for everyone. We did just get a question, Neil. Oh, there we um, go. There's a couple. Yep. If you just take a look, it says um, about how some users can view a library and then others okay. not being able to view the document. All right. So yeah, that's that's kind of along the lines of the permission issues that uh, I, I kind of wrapped up a little bit quickly there at the end. Um, one of the first things that we check for is to see, um, first of all, if if publishing is turned on on that document library, then um, then you might want to check and make sure that the uh, the that particular document has been published. Um, if it has been published, then I would check the permissions to see if um, possibly permissions inheritance has been broken at that document level, and um, and the the groups have been modified as to who has access to that document. Um, but I would definitely check to make sure the document is pub checked in and published first. Um, and then it looks like we have another question that came in uh, regarding alerts. Um, and it looks like, uh, let's say, um, the, the, the question about the alerts it has to do with uh, setting up views. Um, on alerts, and there there could be there could be any of a number of reasons uh, that um, question came in from Jennifer, and there there could be any of a number of reasons why um, you're not uh, um, seeing a, a a certain public view when you're setting up uh, an alert. Um, I think we would probably have to look um, into that and actually see the issue a little bit more closely to to provide a good answer on it. And then there was a follow-up from uh, Catherine on the permissions. If the permissions are broken at the document level, um, do you need to reestablish the user? Well, that user would have to be added into the permissions for that document, um, uh, or you would need to re-inherit permissions. Um, so that it, it inherits the permissions from the document library level. Um, 
Another question came in has to do with uh, permissions for an AD user. Um, they've been added to a SharePoint group, but can't access the same resources. Um, there could be, that, that's another one that could have any of a number of issues. Um, we've definitely seen that before. Um, that's the, the, the type of thing that I would probably, um, I, I would probably want to look at the actual group that they've been added to and the permissions level for that group on the, on the different resources. Um, I would definitely verify that that um, that group has permissions to those to those resources. It's possible that other users are gaining access to the resources because they're members of other groups also. And I don't see any other questions coming through here? Let me see. Let me reorder this. Yeah, I yeah. think that was the last one. I think so, too. So. Okay, great. Thanks, Neil. Uh -huh. So the recording of today's webinar will be placed on our um, site, sharepoint.fertivity.com slash archived webinars. Our contact information is on the screen. And I would like to um, let everyone on the call know that we are offering a one free hour with our managed services team. So if you would like to take advantage of your three hour free hour with our team, um, contact Neil or I, and we will get you started. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We will see you in two weeks. And thank you, Neil, for presenting. Have a great day. Thank you.